All right, hi everybody. So we're gonna spend a little bit time today talking about our first type of conic section, which is a circle. And I'm hoping that the first part of this uh, lesson is going to be review for you guys uh, and just a refresher. But I think it's important to start with the circle, something that we're comfortable and familiar with um, as we head into some of the other conic sections that can be a little bit more complicated. So what we're doing here, and you might think, okay, why are we spending time talking about these shapes like circles and ellipses and things like that when this is algebra class. Well, really, we're going to be looking at the algebraic representation of a geometric um, figure. And it's really important for us to connect these two together. And it becomes even more powerful when we understand the geometric features, but also understand uh, how to represent algebraically and be able to work through things. So um, what we want to do first here is we want to come up with the equation of a circle. Okay, so an equation is going to relate um, the two variables x and y. So if I have a point on my circle, okay, and it could be anywhere on the circle, and let's call that point x, y, um, is there an equation that we can show the relationship between x and y uh, that works for every point on that circle? Well, it's really important for us, and I'll just put the point right there, to understand what does it mean that this point is x, y? Where do we see the x coordinate? Well, the x coordinate of that point is this distance right there. That's our x, isn't it? And the y coordinate is this distance right here. I mean, that's how we understand coordinates to work. The x coordinate is how far left and right. The y coordinate is how far up and down. So if this is x and this is y, that's the point x, y. And what's the relationship here that we have that's true wherever we are on the circle? If I move this point over here, over here, over there, the relationship is, based on the definition of a circle, is that every point is the same distance from the center of the circle. And we call that the radius. And when we draw in the radius, we form, of course, a right triangle. Okay. And is there an equation now that I can use to relate x and y? Well, when we add the radius in there and a right triangle, we should see that we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's the equation of our circle. And if I were to draw it over here instead, it would still be true. Okay. That's still the x-coordinate. That's still the y-coordinate. That's still the radius. We still have a right triangle. And x-squared plus y-squared still equals r-squared. So that's the equation of our circle. Now, on this one, I picked the center of our circle to be at the origin. It's a very convenient place. Um, but what if the center of the origin, uh, center of the circle is not at the origin, but instead is at this point, which I'm going to call h comma k. Okay. Now, we still want to pick a point anywhere on our circle, and I'll just pick this one right here, and we'll call that x, y. Well, if we use the concept that we have before in this triangle, we can draw in the radius and make a right triangle. Now, this is the radius. How long is this? Is this still x? And the answer is no, it's not. x is the distance from here all the way to there. That's x, isn't it? We just want this part. Well, what I notice is from here to there is h. So in the orange is x. In the blue is h. This distance right here matches up down this way and corresponds with this distance. And how long is that? That is x minus h. It's the x coordinate minus the h coordinate. That's x minus h. Now how about this side of the triangle? Well, now we're looking at y values. And we know that the y value for that point is this distance. Actually, I'll just draw it right here. That's y. 
Well, how far is it from here up to there? That's the y-coordinate of the center of our circle, which is k. So how long is that side of our triangle? y minus k. And now that we have this, we can write the equation of our circle using the Pythagorean theorem. Instead of being x squared plus y squared equals r squared, it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And this is the equation for any circle, not just circles whose center is at the origin like we have here. Um, notice if we put 0 in for h and k, we get x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay. So, standard form of the equation of a circle, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The radius of the circle is r and the center of the circle is h comma k. All right, so quick example, can we graph this equation? Well, the center of our, or the standard form of the equation of our circle is this. We can figure out what the center and the radius is. What is our h? Well, we have x minus h, x minus 2, h must be 2. What is k? y minus k, y plus 3. Now we have to be a little careful on this one because this is a plus where that's a minus. k would have to be negative 3 because y minus negative 3 is the same as y plus 3. Lastly, we have r squared and 25. So r squared equals 25 tells us that r has to be 5. So we have the center of our circle is 2, negative 3. And the radius of our circle is 5, and we could graph that. And um, I'm not going to attempt to draw a circle here, but let's just go on to Desmos here. And that's not Desmos, that's GeoDraw, which we'll be maybe using later. And let's type in the equation of the circle that I gave you. x minus 2 squared plus y minus... 3 squared equals 25. One reason I love Desmos uh, over like RTI 84 is we can type in this type of an equation which is called an implicit equation. Um, explicit equations are equations that are solved for y. This is not solved for y. We could do that. I'm not going to do that in this video though. Um, but we can type it in just like that. And what I want you to notice is the center is at 2, negative 3. Oh, I typed in a minus instead of a plus. There we go. Okay. Our center is at 2, negative 3, like we said, and the radius is 5. Notice 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to get to the circle. All right. Let's go with the reverse of that. Let's write the equation of a circle. Here's the graph. Let's write the equation. Well, first thing we need to know is the center of the circle. Now, taking a look at where that would be by looking at a couple diameters, the center of the circle right there is at 0, 1. And we can see that the radius would be 5, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So if we take the standard form of the equation of our circle and we substitute in, Remember, the x-coordinate of the center is h, the y-coordinate is k. We have x minus 0 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 5 squared. We don't need to write the minus 0, so let's just say that's x squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 25 is the equation of that circle. All right, so I'm, I'm hoping that's review for you. You've, you've looked at circles in geometry for sure, maybe in, in algebra too. You did some equations of circle stuff. But now I want to show you a little bit different of an option um, as you look at circles, and this is really neat, really convenient. Hey, to do that, I'm going to teach you something called parametric equations. Parametric equations um, are equations for each parameter of the figure that we're trying to graph. So the x has its own equation and the y has its own equation. And usually we set it up so that they're um, both equations based on the same variable. So x might be a function 
of the variable t. Okay? And y might be a function of the variable t, but it doesn't have to be the same function. So x might be a function with a t in it, y might be a function with a t in it. Um, we could also use thetas or whatever other variable we want, um, but let's just leave it like that. So let me show you a quick example. Let's graph t squared comma t. Well, really, our parametric equations then are x equals t squared and y equals t, and I just wrote them in the form of a point, right? There's the x-coordinate, there's the y-coordinate. x equals t squared, y equals t. So how do we graph this? Well, I'm not going to ask you guys to graph these parametric equations by hand. We're going to head to Desmos again, and let's graph t squared comma t. And when I graph it, I just get that little curve right there. Um, not all that interesting. But what I want you to, know to notice here is some bounds are set for t. We're only graphing for t's from 0 to 1 inclusive. So notice if we put in 0 for t, 0 squared comma 0. So 0, 0 is our first point. If we put in 1, we would have 1 squared, which is 1, comma 1. And that's our second point. But I can change these bounds. Like if I go up to 2... Now things get a little bit more interesting. We have 2 squared, which is 4, comma, 2. So we end up with the point 4, 2. If I go up a little bit more, okay, we end up with the point 9, comma, 3. 3 squared is 9, comma, 3. And we get this parametric, uh, parametric curve. And I wonder if you guys are recognizing this curve at all. Let me just go a little bit further. Um, you might recognize that as the curve y equals the square root of x. Okay. So why is it, or is it really that, I guess we should say. Um, here's what I want you to notice. We have x equals t squared. We know y equals t. Well, if I take this top equation and I solve it for t by taking the square root, we get t equals plus or minus the square root of x. And y equals t, so that tells us y equals plus or minus the square root of x. So we end up seeing that square root function, like I mentioned, recognizing from the graph if we do a little bit of work there. Okay. Now the plus or minus kind of throws us off because I only see a positive here. I don't see the negative. Well, that's a simple fix if I just put in the t to go to negatives like that. Now we can see that full plus or minus the square root of x, which of course is the inverse of y equals x squared. Okay? But I wanted to give you this as a first example of a parametric equation. Um, remember we're writing an equation for the x and an equation for the y. Uh, it's really a neat thing. So I'm going to wrap up this video here and then I'm going to come back with one more example of a parametric, um, parametric equations and then we'll look at how this can help us with circles.